Two years ago, our daughter Kushi was in hospital. My wife and I were sitting beside her bed, and a friendly doctor walks into the room. She says she wants to talk about a CT scan made earlier that day. Together, we walk to another room and take a seat. Three doctors were sitting in front of us. One of them tells us that they've seen a large tumor in the left lung of our daughter and small spots in the right lung. And then there was silence, deadly silence. Lightning struck. I hear cancer. I think death. It is as if I find myself in a very bad movie. The doctor tells us that Hushi will probably remain hospitalized for a long time. And he decided to book a room for us at the Ronald McDonald House. This is a place where parents can spend the night when their child is in hospital. He did it with the best of intentions, but my thought is, who are you to make such a kind of a decision for us? I hadn't realized yet that our lives didn't belong to us anymore. And we had to stay in the hospital for a long time. And everybody kept on telling us we needed rest. But a procession of caregivers passed by her bed. Nurses, more than 60 nurses, oncologists, pediatricians, radiotherapists, surgeons, physiotherapists, psychologists, and that wasn't even the end of it. Each day when we woke up, we didn't know what was going to happen next. We were lived. And during those days in hospital, three things were important for our daughter. First, going to school every morning, even though it was just for an hour. Then she could show everyone how smart she was. Second, painting on Tuesdays, just for half an hour. She loved showing her creativity, and she was always proud of her work. And third, the rabbits of the children's farm. They visited the hospital every Thursday afternoon, and Gusha loved to pet them. However, I remember that those activities were often cancelled, not because of life-threatening situations, but just because of the planning of the scans and examinations. Those activities were not important through the eyes of the hospital, but they were extremely important for our daughter. And do you know why? Those activities gave her the feeling that her life still belonged to her. Just like every other child that's diagnosed with cancer in the Netherlands, our daughter received the beads of courage. There are a lot of different beads, and they all represent a different treatment, experience, or milestone like the smiley for her birthday, <laughs> a, a yellow bead for an x-ray or a scan, D the green orange bead for chemo, the green bead for a very bad day, and a pink one for a very good one. As you can see, those beads are put on a string in chronological order, and those beads helped our daughter to talk about her disease. And together on the string, they symbolized her courage and what she was going through in her young life. We'd been in the hospital for seven weeks in a row, and during those seven weeks, the string with the beads was growing very fast. Then one day, her oncologist entered the room and said, Gusje, I have a present for your 10th birthday. I want you to go home for a week. Wow, a week at home. A week without 60 nurses. A week in which Gusje could decide to paint whenever she wanted to. Well, we were so happy, and we prepared ourselves for going home. But Gusje wasn't really comfortable about the idea of going home. No, she felt that we, as her parents, were not able to give her injections or deal with the feeding tube. 
she wanted her favorite nurse to stay with her at home that week. She asked her nurse, but, and, and, and she didn't understand that this idea was impossible. Then there were two nurses who noticed her uncomfortable feeling. And do you know what they did? They started to train my wife and me in giving injections. And we learned how the feeding tube works. Guusje joined those sessions. And after a few days of training, they decided together, the nurses and our daughter, that Yvonne and I were qualified enough. <laughs> When we came back from a coffee, we had to sit down and we received a diploma. <laughs> we passed our test and graduated. You know, patients like our daughter have to adapt to the organization of the hospital. And you, as professional caregivers, have the ability to give your patients the feeling that they are in control, simply by giving them a choice. It is this feeling of having choices, of making decisions, of being in control, that's important. Your work is about human lives. Medical interventions are carried out on people. Their lives belong to them. And Guusje. She had an internal bleeding seven months after the diagnosis, which filled her belly with blood. She was in a very poor condition. She wasn't strong enough anymore. I had to tell her that we loved her so much that we could let her go. We were sitting around her bed. Her mother, me as a father, her brothers, Hans and Anton, her sisters, Janneke, Lisa and Luz, and of course, her favorite nurse. We had to wait for hours, and just when nobody expected it, she chose her moment. Her life belonged to her. <laughs> 